Mmm, guanciale water. I'm opening a new store. What's it gonna be? It's gonna be called Carlos Guanciale Water and More. <laughs> <laughs> Pasta carbonara is a traditional Italian dish from the Lazio region. All about the union of pasta, guanciale, egg, cheese, black pepper. And that's really it. Because it's like one of those classic Italian ingenuity situation. You know, take a little bit, make it a lot. Each one of us is going to make a version of carbonara. But whatever the form the dish has taken, there needs to be something about it that is quirky. Spicy, starchy, chewy, rich, salty, cheesy, yolky, creamy. I think that's like the key to carbonara. It's so elemental. I just want to get that forkful that has a lot of eggy sauce, a nubbin of guanciale, an al dente noodle, all in one bite. Working on traditional carbonara, I'm gonna use the methods that any Italian cook would use, and this dish really, honestly, you could make it over a campfire. I'm not getting out a blender, and I'm not gonna do any like fancy other tricks with this. I think if you just do it right, the way you emulsify a sauce in the pan, you're gonna be great. I think modern carbonara sounds like it's gonna suck, because it just sounds like somebody's taken something that was good and pure, and they with it. I felt really clear with my direction that I wanted to break some rules, but not all the rules. I wanted somebody to come along and be able to say, that's carbonara. Well, I like the idea of tackling experimental because it, I feel like it kind of means whatever you want it to mean. Like, it's just, it can be nonsense. It's an experiment. It doesn't even have to be good. Does that work? I don't know. <laughs> There's no sweetness. So that's gonna be my twist. I'm going for carbonara dessert. <laughs> we'll see what happens when you throw sweetness in there. I've got some dried pasta here. You should definitely make carbonara with dried pasta. The advantage of using dried pasta, and I think why this dish would have originated this way is because where a lot of fresh pastas are revered because they're so delicate and ethereal. A dried pasta has like that really nice al dente chew. It felt really incumbent on the Carla to use dried pasta. That feels 100% traditional. I think modern carbonara opened up the window for us to be able to use a fresh pasta. And that means trying a couple different methods. So I've got one dough that's a combination of semolina flour, which is kind of like a coarser grind from like a very hard wheat. This dough, this is all AP flour. It's much softer. See how easy it is to dent? As opposed to this one, much firmer. So I have a feeling this is gonna be the kind of toothsomeness that we want here. In order to be considered carbonara, you need to have a chewy texture in there. The word, you know, al dente really leaps to mind because all of those flavors that I mentioned, you know, richness, cheesiness, if that is just presented devoid of texture, all you're gonna have is like a big bowl of mush. I think we're just gonna cook off like a little piece, just a little kind of taster and just see what happens. The all-purpose flour is just so flavorless and bland, whereas the semolina has just more of that like nutty kind of character to it. Carla, taste this. Is it a noodle? Mmm. It was only in there for a minute. So dente. So al dente. Mm, it's good. It's Which good, is rare right? for a fresh pasta. I love making carbonara with spaghetti. I also love making carbonara with like a fat tube, like rigatoni. These are rigate, which means they have ridges in them. So the sauce will cling on the outside, but then you've got the tubes for the little pieces of guanciale to get inside, which I also love. Traditionally, the pasta should be cooked in salted mm. boiling water. Salty. All right. Hey Siri, set timer for seven minutes. So traditional carbonara, there's pasta and you cook it and you eat it like pasta. I want my pasta to do something else in this dish. I'm gonna use spaghetti. I'm gonna boil the pasta to death so it's gonna like expand all the cell walls. Little salt, I don't want to go crazy like if I was making pasta because this is going to be a dessert, no matter what anyone says to me. 
and then I'm going to dehydrate that. I'm going to dehydrate pasta right now. Will you help me? Yes. I want them to be... No, do your rack. This oh, is my rack. Okay. I How... thought we were on a... <laughs> now I got my own thing? You got your own rack. Come over okay. here. I'm hoping to get like a funnel cake. Okay. You know, express yourself. I feel like yours has more chaos going on yes. <laughs> and more rage. Uh -huh. Like, oh, oh yeah, I'm going straight. No curves here, no soft edges. Look at all these sharp edges. You want to head over to the beehive? Yes. Let's go. Is that it? I, th I mean, we could hit this. Yeah. And Is the fan on? on the fan's not running, though. No. That's full. That not the... Oh, it's on. Yeah. yeah. Easy. All right. Okay. I think some of the best dishes we do at Bon Appetit are the ones where we kind of take an idea that we've seen out in the world and we kind of repurpose it, you know, and like make it fit within like our world here. So like an egg yolk raviolo is something that has been out in the world for quite some time. But to take that idea of like an egg yolk filled pasta and carbonara it, if you will, and bring in all those other flavors that we kind of talked about felt like a little bit of a no-brainer to me. Okay, so this is the pasta that we cooked to death and now we've dehydrated. If you remember when it went in there, it was really thick and like fat and it's like shriveled up a bit. I want to deep fry it and then what happens is because you've already like loosened up those starch cell walls, when you fry it, it'll puff. You know how popcorn has a little bit of moisture in it and when you heat it up, that moisture turns to steam and turns it inside out? So basically that's the same thing we want to happen here. We want this to be 90% dry, and then that little bit of moisture in there, when it hits the oil, it's gonna steam and the whole thing's supposed to fuck. That's so cool. Wow, that's like magic. There we go. So I want it to be really crunchy and really light, like a pasta chicharron. The opposite of what the pasta would be like in a traditional carbonara. Oh my God, look at this. Them. Why are they so puffy like that? So I think that it's maybe the starch like going into retrogradation. Retrogradation? You know, you know it like when you hydrate the starch and then you cool it? No. Nope. It kind of stiffens up even further? No. Nope. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah, I think that's what's going on. I see. It's very pleasing. This is guanciale, it's cured pork jowl. As I demonstrate on my own jowl, it's a really um, fatty, very delicious, very tender part of the animal. Similar to bacon, but this isn't smoked, so you don't get that like smokiness from bacon, instead you get a funkiness from that age. When I'm thinking about the guanciale, I have to also think about pancetta, which is a little bit easier to get, has a similar sort of meaty, fatty component. It doesn't have the spices that are put onto guanciale. It is also a little less funky. So I do want to kind of see those side by side and make a decision about whether I'm a pancetta person or a guanciale girl. They're a little bit meatier than the pancetta. They're coming up more like little nuggets. These are so different in texture. This is guanciale. It's super like nuggety and crunchy and bubbly and has like a lot of surface texture. And the pancetta is just more smooth. I just like everything about the guanciale better. They just feel more like hunky and satisfying. With regards to the pork, the game plan is kind of gonna be that I'm gonna make this really concentrated broth with pork hock. I'm then gonna pick the meat from the pork hock put it back into the liquid and then solidify it in a very even layer. All right, I already f***ed up. I thought I was being clever with the parchment, but instead I have some of my liquid running under the parchment. Can you see the offending corner there? Nobody's perfect. So this is gonna set so firmly and I'm not gonna be able to redistribute any of this. So I just wanna make sure there's a good bit of... We're good. I'm not gonna mess with it anymore. You know, the smoked pork hock, it's not that dissimilar from a cured pork product because it has been kind of salted and smoked. It's just, everything's just kind of tweaked and played with a little bit. So typically the guanciale is used more as like a flavor component than a protein in the dish. So you use this pretty relatively small amount usually cut up into small pieces, and then you cook that in your skillet, and that kind of is your base. The fat's gonna render out of it, and you're gonna use that to like cook everything else in. 
it's, it's really important to try to buy it in one piece so that you can cut to the like nice fat lardone that I would want it to be in and really to resist the urge to cook it all the way to crunchy or crispy. What I'm going for in the end is still a pretty chewy, a little bit juicy with fat and springy as opposed to having like hard bako bits in the bottom of the possible. I definitely have the simplest thing going on here and I'm stressed about time. So <laughs> I don't know what's happening to Sola. It's not a competition. Are you guys making fun of me? No, I'm I, I'm just like making more making fun of myself. I can't even do one thing and you're doing seven. <laughs> None of it's gonna be good, Carla. I am gonna still cut my guanciale up into little pieces and render it out, but I'm gonna take it all the way and get it super crispy. I'm basically making guanciale bacon bits. And then I wanna dip my little crispy spaghetti funnel cake thing in some caramel, dip it in the crispy guanciale bits and hopefully it'll all stick and add like a little salty, funky bite to everything. Don't you want like the guanciale to be even finer so you get like more even like dispersal and like better cling? That's probably a good idea. But at this point, can you do it? Because I, I have to man the caramel. <laughs> Thank you. Like real yeah. quick? Yeah. Unforeseen consequence. Uh-oh. Is it usable? Yeah, well, it's getting a little bit sticky. Let's try it. Let's just try it. I don't know. It. Let me I mean, try I'm, I'm totally open to whatever you want. I still have plenty of, like, pieces in there. It was just starting to get that kind of pastiness, so I stopped it. Yeah. Just in case you, you want to keep going with, like, a, oh, let me try to sprinkle it. Yeah. Let me thing. try the sprinkle thing, and okay. then if that doesn't work, I'll stir it in. All right. Crisp it. a little bit. Probably should have done a hand chop for that, but it's okay. Sabotage. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little of this blanch, and this is getting very hot. I'm gonna just try one out, see what happens. Dunk? No. No, it's so ugly. No good, no good. Well, I don't know, maybe. Imagine having like a lot of those. It might be cute. Maybe we're okay. I'm gonna push forward, it actually tastes pretty good. So I'm gonna add a little baking soda. It aerates the caramel a little bit. So you get a lighter crunch when you bite into it. Pull it out. Get a little guanche. Too much guanche. Shake it off. <laughs> How many of these do I need to make? You're good. This is ugly. This is nice. This one's So I had the shredded bits of pork hock inside the raviolo. Oh yeah. Pleasing. But on the outside, I wanted to just maintain a fairly traditionally inspired sauce. So I had rendered guanciale, and honestly, like I'll be looking over Carla's shoulder a little bit just in terms of seeing how she's constructing the very traditional. As far as I know, the guanciale is just gonna be cut into some kind of shape, crisped up, and then added back into the dish like later at the end to be part of that final composition. egg is the foundation for the sauce. The heart and soul of carbonara. In traditional carbonara, you have some combination of whole egg and yolk. They are a, a total starring player in this dish. And I think, you know, especially in this kind of case, like seeking out quality, like really goes a long way. Those pastured eggs, because the, the chickens have a broader diet and they're pecking around and getting different kinds of stuff, those yolks tend to be a very beautiful, rich color and are probably just closer to the traditional chicken egg, which would have been these like very happy chickens pecking all around in Italy. You really want to lean on the ability of the yolk to provide body richness, you know, texture, glossiness to your sauce. In my kind of modern take on carbonara, I felt really clear that I wanted to create a very traditionally based sauce, but I also wanted the inclusion of just straight up egg yolk inside my raviolo itself. It's like suddenly it seems like a real bad idea, you know? Well, it's staying still and that's something. You don't want any errant moisture inside that raviolo because it's gonna prevent you from getting a good seal. But that's like not terrible. And sometimes not terrible is great. And I'm gonna have to determine how to shape the raviolo. Is it better to go all in on 
one big raviolo that kind of fills a plate? Is it better to do several small ones? Ooh, I think the words you're looking for are not bad. I don't know that you need three of these on a plate. Like, maybe you're getting one. Maybe you're getting one. There is a raviolo on the menu with egg yolk at Polizzi Social Club in Philly. And his, like, his is, like, it's square. It's not circle. It's yeah. square edge. And it kind of, like, almost drapes off the side of the plate a little bit. It's big. Is this with the porky stuff? Mm-hmm. I might do one big sformato. Oh, that's what I thought you were gonna do. I don't know. Of so you're not gonna like cut it out? No. Yeah, I'm into that. You get more of that. And one then you're yolk. a better yolk to filling ratio. Yeah, but that way yeah. you have extra pasta to, to balance enjoy your sauce. the rest of it. Yeah, that sounds good. It's not like a crazy amount more, but at least like now I'm feeling a little bit more bullish about just kind of shaping it how I want. That's like real life right there. The thing holding my whole dish together is going to be this little base of rich egg yolk ice cream. That is going to be like the core, the heart, the sauce. So I'm going to blend some yolks into here, a lot of yolks. I'm going to put them in while it's on. So the eggs in carbonara are really vital to the identity of carbonara. I want to make sure I have a lot of this deep yolk richness and flavor in mind. And I think that by turning the yolks into an ice cream, it's like the perfect vehicle. So cheese and carbonara. I believe it can be parm. I believe it can be pecorino. Maybe it can be both. This is pecorino cheese. I love pecorino. Some people don't. <sighs> Between you and me, okay. Like pecorino, it, it's like a hammer. Literally like it grabs your taste buds like a you know, like werewolf in the night and like doesn't let go. I think it is very delicious. It can be, a little bit funky, it can go a little bit sour, it can be just like a, a little bit overwhelming. So combining it with something that's like a little bit sweeter and nuttier like a uh, Parmesan, totally, totally works. So I have a quarter cup each of Parm and Pecorino. And I can tell, you can tell by the color. See how much more yellow the um, Parm is? I like Pecorino, Chris is not a too. fan. Well, yeah, Chris like Chris has some. Hey, there's nothing weird about not liking bananas or peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> I opted to use Parmesan. I just find the flavor is better. These kinds of cheeses are like really sturdy and firm and dry, and that like dryness is gonna translate well to like a nicely emulsified sauce. In a bowl, I want to combine my egg yolks, whatever whole egg I'm doing, with the grated cheese. Cheese needs to go into the sauce. It needs to melt into the sauce. It needs to emulsify into the sauce. It needs to be part of what's adding richness, body, flavor. You know, the sauce for my raviolo ultimately was like a pretty traditional carbonara sauce, but with the addition of garlic. You're staying firm on no garlic, yeah? Not tradish. Get out of here. I really like what Carla has going on so far. Her sauce has a wonderful texture to it. So I'm thinking of kind of taking that idea, but rounding it out. A little bit of butter, a little bit of garlic for a little bit of extra depth. I personally just love the addition of garlic in my carbonara. It brings a little bit of sweetness, an extra kind of earthy funkiness of its own. It really plays well with the other flavors there, but not traditional. So for my cheese component, the cheese is the one thing that I feel like isn't gonna work with the dessert. I wanna use it very subtly. So traditionally the Parma Pecorino is, is thrown into the sauce and like you toss your pasta through with the cheese and it, it melts and emulsifies and enriches everything. So I'm, I feel like by putting my cheese flavor into my yolk, ice cream, which is kind of like the sauce of my dish, is kind of the same vibe. So I'm, I want to use the cheese rinds to steep in the milk for my ice cream for just like a little bit of saltiness and a little bit of that cheesy funk. I've never had Parmesan ice cream, and I don't know if anyone should. We're going to find out together. I don't want too much of it, to be honest, because I think it'll just be weird. <laughs> I really love this ice cream machine, and 
I want one. Hold up. Are you not I excited? I tried to change that to the non-musical one. I like the no, musical one. No, 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 Why? no. Shut it down. Why don't Shut you it love down. any joy? It's looking really thick and creamy and so yolky. I think it's done. Yeah, you get yolks on the palate right away, and then it finishes parm, which is kind of funny. It's almost like a little mean trick. I don't know. <laughs> so this is an egg yolk and parmesan ice cream. Parmesan? Uh-huh. Put parmesan cheese in here? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a milkshake. <laughs> wow. We oui. Good well, bad well, weird well. I'm kind of into it. It's so trippy. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Right? <laughs> what topping would you do? It's getting a spaghetti and guanciale funnel cake on top. Yeah. A that was a joke. No, I'm not. It's not a joke. I'm <laughs> <laughs> ice cream. Ah, uh, black pepper. <laughs> Really one of my favorite spices. Black pepper is one of those spices that I think is so easy to overlook. And I think we're so used to kind of like, oh, a little sprinkle of black pepper on my salad, you know, but really kind of incorporating it into a dish, like in a deliberate way, it's capable of bringing so much flavor. You can't really make carbonara without black pepper. It is an integral part of the dish. It's gonna add a little bit of brightness. It's like a little high note. Um, that's gonna cut the richness the, just the same way acid does, like when you're finishing something with a little squeeze of lemon juice or vinegar, the pepper's gonna do that for us. You need that little bit of spiciness uh, to cut through all the other richness that's going on. Okay, so now I'm gonna toast the pepper. Oh, they're dancing. Ah, oh! When you pay attention to what's happening to the food, you notice these things that if you're just following instructions, you wouldn't even notice. Grind them up a little bit. Traditionally, or the way that I have learned um, to make carbonara, you would add the black pepper to the egg and cheese mixture that goes into the sauce. Black pepper. I certainly incorporated it into my sauce. I want to toast or bloom my coarsely ground black pepper in hot fat because there's flavors that are fat soluble and there are flavors that are water soluble. Pepper can kind of swing both ways. I would say that like what you extract in the hot fat is a little bit sharper. It's a little bit more keyed up. And I will add, once the pasta is almost done, some of the pasta water into that egg and cheese mixture just to like loosen it up, warm it up a little bit. So loosening with a little bit of water is gonna help keep this emulsion alive. I mean, I think it's good, you know? The pasta water is a vital ingredient to like any pasta dish, but especially a dish like this because there's no like cream, it's not a tomato base. The pasta water is the heart of the dish. I need some pasta water. Did I just dump it all out? Did you dump the pasta water? Oh Sola, that's the number one thing not to do. Can I have some of your pasta water? Wow. <laughs> okay, I have a ladle right here. It's really good that everyone's got pasta going. So I really want the pasta water to be a focus in my experimental dish by turning it into like a, an espuma or foam to like kind of coat the whole thing. I'm gonna enrich my pasta water with a splash of cream and then set it with some gelatin. Oh, I don't want the espuma to be too sweet, but I am gonna add a little bit of sugar. And then I'm gonna put my pepper in my pasta water foam. And that's a great way to kind of get the pepperiness all over everything, but I want it to be in a more subtle way. I don't want like whole cracked black peppercorns in my dessert, but I want like the essence of black pepper in, in my foam, you know, just barely hit you in the nose. I'm gonna pour it into this. This is a little um, charger to whip it up. So it gets really nice and fluffy and thick, just like whipped cream. And then I'm going to pop it in an ISI container and charge it with some, what's it called, nitrogen? I don't know, I don't know science. <laughs> There's a little pin here, so when I screw this on here, it pierces it, and then this gas gets injected into here and aerates the whole thing. And I'm, I'm gonna chill this. Okay. 
carbonara is one of those dishes that um, I like to say asses in chairs. Like when the pasta's in the water, get your ass in a chair. Because the second it's done, it's coming to you. Got rigatoni. I got guanciale fat water, which is the name of my new scent. When the pasta goes into the pan with the guanciale fat and I add the egg and the cheese mixture, then there's the tossing and the stirring and the emulsifying that's happening in the pan. I mean, the key thing about when you're building the sauce in the pan is there has to be some residual heat. If the egg doesn't get cooked at all, it's gonna be really thin and it's gonna just taste kind of raw. If you heat it up too much or too quickly, it's gonna turn into scrambled egg. So that moment, that's actually like a pretty active cooking moment. Oh my God. Oh la la, okay. Oh my God, there's so many guanciale tunnels. The major advantage with the rigatoni is the guanciale tunnel that I'm very attracted to. <laughs> I like to hold back some of the cheese after I've made the pan sauce just to go freshy fresh on top. Oh Lord, I'm quite pleased. Raviola just went in two minutes. I might pull it a few seconds before. I'm gonna dump it right into our sauce here. Dunk. I'm just gonna let it kind of coat, hang out in there just briefly, and then we're gonna take it right to the plate. All right. Okay, so we can plate one up. Um... Uh, I was gonna quenelle this, but this is super hard, and this isn't very frozen. So it kind of throws off my plating completely. Can you not use this and then just cut to perfectly plated dish? No? Is that not how it works? What happened here? <gasps> Did it just... Is it from it sitting out at room temperature right now? <laughs> uh, wow, it's really easy to go through a, an emotional down spiral with these things, huh? That's what you live for, isn't it? You're just waiting. So you're setting me up. Tell them nothing can go wrong. She's quenelling. <gasps> that was... It's see. fine. How it sunk in, it was beautiful. A little dippy dippity doo da. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Take it away. It's boom. Take it away. It's boom. Come, come. Oh, go God. My classic dish. I know which one <laughs> I'm going for because I see the lardon. Oh, there's the one of those right here. Right I'm right going to go for one, too. Um, in the end, mm. Mm. that's really good. It's texture, flavor, real sharp pop of black pepper, porky, and then the egg is like kind of everything, just like kind of in every crevice, yeah. like coating your mouth, and then the cheese is like kind of like your seasoning. It's yeah. a real smack of the face. Classic, gorgeous. Really classic. I think, honestly, Didn't one of the best it. carbonars I've ever had. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not Sola. even saying that. It's really good. <laughs> You know, mine sat for a little bit while everybody messed around, mainly Sorry. Sola. Sorry. Um, Shots. Look at the beautiful Natural ruffle. Yeah. I love the texture of that. You know what I did? Because I just kept that raw live edge of the pasta yeah. that as it came through the sheeter. Yeah. Oh, Because I just so kind of like celebrate. you didn't turn off the edges at all? No. That's no, really cool. I, I really like how here that here, looks. But I, I feel like keep something in more of its organic, natural form. Yeah. You know, like why does it have to be so? We should hopefully still have some fluid fluidity here. Mm. Oh wow, it's so oh orange. Oh my god. Wow. That's perfect. That's one of those eggs that has the yolk that's yes. just like amazing. amazing. That barely looks real. I love that it's like a very mo a modern approach in that you're nodding to the rusticness of the original mm -hmm. in all of those sort of details, but there's like a refinement in all of the technique and then messing with the sauce, like you said, to like add flavors so that it's not just mm. what it is. Yeah. You know where it's coming from. You mm -hmm. get the carbonara vibe, but it tastes nothing mm. like 
Carlos Carbonara. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. I feel like I'm getting a lot more richness from mm -hmm. that gelatinous ham hock. Yeah. I really poo pooed the garlic. But I would now, if I made carbonara at home, I would add garlic to it. I was more worried about the garlic than the ham hock. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I funny. really like the garlic in it. I love that. So good. Wicked. Wicked. Wicked awesome. Dessert carbonara, what you've always wanted. You didn't know, but. <laughs> All right, get in mm. there. It's melting. Looks yeah. incredible. Look, it's oozing like Chris's ravioli center. Huh. It's so weird. Because it really, it does taste like carbonara. It really does taste like carbonara. But it also tastes like dessert. Uh-huh. That yolk flavor is so... Mm. It's so weird. Mm. I appreciate all your support. It was really an emotional journey. I love the yolk ice cream. I mean, you could just serve that. The yolk ice cream and honestly, like the salted pasta water foam, like the flavor of that. Yeah. Those are my favorite things for me. You like the pasta water foam? Yeah, no, I, I do. I was mostly but... making that to troll you. <laughs> no, the, 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 <laughs> no, the flavor really carries Ooh. the thought. Yeah, like pasta. Like you get the saltiness, but you also get that. Yeah, like the starch, the like starch. the woody starch. It was from my pasta water. It was your pasta water. The caramel is the only mm. thing where I'm just like, that that tilts it into the, the the place of like it's it's not carbonara anymore. Yeah. You know I understand yeah. like how it's functioning in there and like why it makes sense, but but like that flavor starts to like shriek and like you know kind of get loud against some of the other ones. There's a lot of really good. If things I had happening three more hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I just need three more hours. <laughs> <laughs> for a nope. brand new <laughs> invention with 17 elements and uh, one day to think about it, I think it's pretty good. And for it to come off reading as anything like carbonara, I think it's pretty rad. I, I think Scoff. I've learned that, you know, you can break out of tradition a little it's bit. That's all right. Yeah. yeah. You learned that you can break out of tradition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to break for coffee. coffee. Wow. Yeah, like jewel tone berry. Yes. Just like staying. Yeah. 